by getting close to them, he's making some brand new observations, which, if true, could change the scientific view of black bear behavior. I believe that the process that I use produces more accurate results than science can. For 12 years, he has been gathering hundreds of hours of video footage. Ben believes this will reveal a social world with similarities to our own. The striking thing about bears is their social behavior, and I believe it to be a mirror of a behavior that allowed humans to succeed in the first place. It's April. Ben is making his way up the mountain to where six months ago he last saw a pregnant Squirty disappearing into her den to hibernate. What a good girl. What a good girl. From November to April, bears go without food or water, surviving by dropping their temperature a few degrees. I've just been to Squirty's den, and she's friendly to the seer and has two new cubs. Uh, she was hanging above the den in the sun, catching some rays. From spring to fall every year, Ben spends as much time with Squirty as possible. With her help and his special gift to read bears, he is gaining new insights into bear behavior. It's a beautiful day up here, and I think I'll head back down over the mountain and wait to see Squirty in a few more weeks. What makes this relationship between man and bear possible is that it began when she was a cub. Twelve years ago, when Squirty was seven weeks old, her mother disappeared. Wildlife officers found her and her siblings and handed them over to Ben, the only person in New Hampshire licensed to rehabilitate wild bears. Ben became the only man ever to successfully hand-raise black bear cubs when he controversially crossed the divide between man and animal by taking on the role of a bear parent. When Squirty came to us, she weighed about three pounds and she was seven weeks old. Her eyes had just opened, her had little ear flaps were still down. She wobbled when she tried to walk. Uh, she and her, her siblings were very, very tiny. They had no experience with their mothers outside the den. Ben taught the cubs everything they needed to survive. Amazingly, this came to him quite naturally. But it made some scientists uneasy. They were afraid his close contact with the cubs would reduce their fear of man and jeopardize their survival in the wild. This only made Ben more determined. Very field of science is like a club. It has rules. And these rules will be you can't work with habituated bears or you, know, you can't have close association with bears. And, well, rules like that, you're never going to learn anything. 